I've had women come and talk, don't you believe I can get to heaven with these on? I said, I didn't tell you you couldn't. But I said, yeah, you can ask God about it. I said, if abomination can get in, go ahead and wear them. I ain't going to try to get in no abomination. Neither shall a man put on a... Now the, uh, the men's clothes are being made like women. Men's underclothes. And, uh, it's a shame. But it's all the day of the end. We're seeing Daniel's prophecy right now come to pass. The temples of God, the churches of God, and I'm not talking about the denomination of churches that's supposed to be Christian churches. They're nothing but a bunch of abomination in them. And nobody lifts no standard up against it. Nobody, everybody's afraid to stand up and preach the truth. You can't even walk down the streets anymore. Women's got their hair cut off like men's supposed to have theirs, and men wearing their hair like women. I had somebody, somebody said, what do you think about a man have long hair? He had dandy on his shoulders. I looked at him, I said, all I know, the Bible said it's a shame. And if you want to run around shame all the time, do it. <laughs> but I'm not going to do it if I can get a haircut. Use somebody uh, would cut mine free, just had somebody cut it free. When he then let them which is in Judea, and he's used that for example, flee to the mountains. Or if you're in a big city, God told me you need to be getting out because I told y'all, and, and, and that's already come to pass. The devil doesn't talk over cities. It's not, a city ain't a place to raise kids no more. Y'all drop that from the records that you uh, talking about me about that. Because these town, even you little town like Fort Payne, man, uh, I wouldn't live inside one of them. <laughs> evil, evil, evil. Let them which is on the house top not come down to take anything out of his house house you know Jesus was warning them not only that Jerusalem was going to be destroyed but he went on spoke about the whole world but Jerusalem was uh, an example and you know the people in, in Jerusalem that went in tried to get their stuff out got trapped when Jerusalem fell he told them to, to get out of there Flee. If, if the Christians and the Jews would have listened to Jesus, they'd have went ahead and got He said, it's gonna, Jerusalem is going to fall. He told them that temple was going to fall. And when they saw the Romans come in there and, and tore up that temple, the Romans come in and raped him women. They come in and, and he warned them. You know, if, if Israel, and, that, and they did, then they fled all over the world. That's the reason everywhere Jews went everywhere. And, and the, the whole uh, prophecy of Jesus plus what he spoke in out for us, the end of the world. He talked about the end shall come. And he, talk, he spoke uh, different prophecies there. He told them that was, that was a sign to us that what he said that this gospel of the kingdom should be preached in all the world and then the final end should come but he said nations against nations right now uh, countries is so confused and Christianity had dropped all over the world hardly uh, they said one in two and three percent in Europe down here in America that, that was in January of 32 and no telling how much now 10 months later passed how far we backslid and yet we still can't pray sure. 
Neither them which is in the fields return back to take his clothes. Otherwise, people that's if you're out of town, or he's using that as an example, you know, you see what's happening. Don't try to run and get your stuff. Just take what you got because God going to set this world on fire. Before it's over, he is going to burn cities. Jerusalem was for example. He's not talking, you know, when all these things begin to come to pass. Look up. He didn't come then. You hear these preachers, oh, he's all that about Jerusalem. He didn't come then. Look up. For your redemption draws now. The second coming of the Lord when God redeems the body out of tribulation. When he redeems, when he resurrects the dead. Some to eternal life and some to eternal damnation. We see the signs of the time. Neither let them which is in the fields return back. They said not only that, but other and 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 going on now, like China, when these a lot of these people in Germany, when the Germans took over, people trying to get their stuff. You know what happened? They got killed. They got trapped. And it's happening when war breaks out. He said, "Go." Them Christians over yonder, that if they'd have listened. Somebody warned them that what them Muslims going to do if they'd have got out of there. They'd have saved about 15,000 Christian lives if they'd have listened to somebody. At least they might have had to leave their houses, but they could have fled into the mountains. Don't you think you won't flee in these mountains? I said, don't you think you won't flee in these mountains? Hell is going to break loose. Ain't a word here. The Bible said every word of God is pure. And the Bible said not one tittle or one jot will fail Amen. from this word. So don't you run around here and think that, that, that you ain't got nothing to worry about. We all got something to worry about. Amen. He said if you on the housetop. Let them which is in the which is on the housetop. Give an example. If you're up there and you see this thing, don't run down and start packing your clothes. Hit the road. That's why right, you use this example. Or oh, when you see it coming, flee. There's a judgment coming. Amen. When it ain't going to be communism. When it ain't going to be the Muslims. When God himself is going to pour the wrath of God to set his reveal from heaven against all ungodliness and worldly lusts. Telling us we should live soberly, righteously, and put on the whole arm of God that we might have an opportunity, might have a chance to stand and say we would, that we might stand, having done all to stand, stand having your loins girded about with the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the living Word of God, and a good Bible to give you comfort. And you read that in Turtle 2 and 4. I put that in there. Woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. He didn't say not have babies. He just said here that if you got a little child, it's going to be worse on you. You know. It's going to be worse on you. And it was. People had kids when Jerusalem fell. But these preachers come and say, oh, this happened 2,000 years ago. In 70 A.D., when the Romans come in, that was just an example. Everything Jesus spoke, he spoke it for the last days. Did you know until the 20th century, there weren't about 17 or 18, less than 100 
major earthquakes in the world. Did you know there was a whole generation, not one earthquake since Jesus said that? There was a generation that there'd be one major quake in a hundred years. But when we got on down to, to, to the 1800s, they started being more frequent. Really, and they got on down, uh, there was hardly, sometime in a whole century, five like 1800 or 1700 but when we got down to the 20th century that they, they started off slow they had one at the turn of the 20th century california killed all them people destroyed los angeles you know of what it destroyed destroyed that whole coast at the turn of the century but since that los angeles quake hit at the turn of the 20th century there have been millions of earthquakes. Then a day goes by, there ain't dozens and hundreds of earthquakes. They say there's something down there. Hell is enlarging itself. Hell is enlarging itself. And you know what happened in Nigeria when uh, when they was drilling for oil, when when that uh, drill fell off and melted, and they pulled it up and it was melted. And when it did, they, they drilled down a mile and they heard a woman screaming. They put a microphone down there and just before the microphone burned out, they heard a woman screaming. And they tested it and they drilled into hell. I know people laughed at that. But it was so. I was over in that area. It was absolutely so. They drilled down into hell and a woman was screaming. So don't you think that God tried to wake people up then? But you can't wake this bunch up. You can't wake them up. Oh, be unto them that are with child. That's pitiful. Well, a woman praying at or got a baby, it's going to be terrible to them that give us. Even in those days, people had a baby. And any destruction, when calamity hits, all these things, if people has got babies, it ain't going to be uh, dump them in a trash can. It just means when you got a baby to take care of, like that lady holding that baby there, it's going to be tough on her as all this that child if Jesus comes in the next two or three years. But he's coming. Man, there have been millions born and millions died since he said it. But that don't do away with the Scriptures. I've heard people say, well, Jesus missed it. He didn't miss it. He said, this is going to be at the time of the end of the world. And the second coming of Christ. Pray that your flight. He's not talking about rapture. He's talking about when you have to leave Chattanooga. When you have to get out of Fort Payne or you have to get out of Birmingham. That's what he told me. He said, tell my people to get houses in the country and it'd be good for them to get 50 or 60 miles out of the cities Amen. and learn to live out there. You have know what I told you. I didn't tell you you was going to hell. I told you to raise your families, learn to live out there in the country. Because 98% of the time when it hits, you'll be at home. Amen. There's a good bit. And if you ain't, you're at work and you're maybe five miles from home, you can walk home. Amen. You can run. You say, well, what about winter? Well, I'll tell you what it's going to be. When you do have to flee, it ain't going to be in the wintertime. Can you think about freezing weather and you have to flee out of Chattanooga? Can you think about freezing weather when God brings wrath on Atlanta? Got that baby out there in the cold weather. Don't you read the scriptures? See, I read the scriptures. Y'all just try to figure it out. I read the scriptures. He said if it happens, pray it won't happen in the wintertime. Prayer don't happen on a Sabbath day because in that day, the law of God, you couldn't go nowhere but from the, your house to church. 
Otherwise, if, if, if it happens on a Saturday, in that time, you was forbidden to do anything, even flee. And he was telling them, pray that when this comes, it don't happen on the Sabbath. Oh, when it's cold. Amen. Don't you say you won't do it, you will. I warn people, and you know, God's had me a little bit this year, and I'm getting back into this, and it's been 40 years I've been telling this thing could be on us now. Yes. I remember that I was back down in the Lord George in Florida, in that area, and, and I was on a fast, and I had a vision. <laughs> I had that new house we have. Of course, it ain't new now, but it's like new. Sister Church, she keeps it so new. I, I don't really had that new house that he's building it. But I was trying to get there. I wasn't with Sister Church at the time, I was with, but nobody. And I got stuck over there trying to get out of Florida and then made it to the other side of Mobile trying to get up that highway coming out of that, you know, coming out of Florida, that 10, back through there. And I was in that long fast and I got caught there. I got there, I looked and as far as I could see, cars are just, all cars shut down. Nobody's cars. You know all the new cars now uh, that you buy the, the, in this country and the ones that ship in here, they can shut them down up there in Washington. All new cars. Huh? Cut that, they, run, they got that computer. They run on computer and folks laughed at me. And that Antichrist, that bunch in Washington and the, the power that's taken over the government, when they get ready to do this, they're going to shut your electricity off. And I said, God told me to learn to live in the country. Get your wood stove. Get your wood stove. Says, turn on, we got a wood stove right there in the kitchen. We don't use it, but it's sitting right there. And I can get out and pick up enough limbs that fell off a tree and break them with my knee and to, for her to cook me something to eat. <laughs> we have to cook on that wood stove. Thank you, Jesus. It, and it can happen at any time. And the Lord this year and in the last few months has had me rewarning what I'd done 40 years ago. I believe this thing could be even as Jesus said at the door. Remember that? Pray that you're flat. That means when you do have to flee out of the cities, won't be in the wintertime, and even then, the law of God, and it's still God's law, you're not supposed to. If it happened on the Sabbath day, if you're going to keep God's word, you ain't allowed to do it on the Sabbath day. You was not, it was against the law. It was against the, it's a sin to go anywhere on the Sabbath day any further than church and back home. That is the real keeping of the Sabbath. And I haven't found where Jesus ever knowed all that. All these churches, you can do anything now you want to. And for a while, people, uh, you know, you had to learn to live like that. People thought because it didn't happen next year, they went right back. You got to raise your kids. You got to live every day like you might be living in the day when the Antichrist. One thing about it, all the churches are Antichrist now about it. So when you see that, see the abomination spoken of, of Daniel in the church houses, 
Right now, the abomination is in the church houses now. Women coming in there and women, men's clothes. Men coming in there with women's clothes. Men's coming there with ear bobs in the ears. I saw a man the other day. In fact, I saw one right out here. Uh, had two, two sets of ear bobs in his ears. Last night. I thought to myself, Lord, what is it? What's a Alabama coming to? And a little bird jumped on my shoulder and said, I think it's already come to it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. That must have been Rico. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's, we are there. Yes. But we ain't going to wake up. You'd be blessed to get one of these CDs. Every house. What's happening? And get it to all your people. But you won't do it. And they sure. You say, how do you know they'll listen at it? Well, get the blood off of you. For then shall be great tribulations, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. Of course, them theologians, all that happened in Jerusalem. It did not happen. In, it happened, but it's happening. It happened in Japan. It happened in Korea. But the world didn't end. And except those days should be shortened, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. Then if any shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, and there believe it not. For there shall rise false Christ, false anointing, false prophets, shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch as if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. That didn't happen back there when Jesus spoke his. You had holy men of God then. Judas went and hanged himself so that got rid of him. Then God added another 70. They had that. That made 81. Then Paul got saved, got 82. And then Barnabas joined him and others began to come in there. And God began to raise up. But he wasn't just talking about the end. He's talking about the end of the world. But every generation's got to live like it's the end of the world because we don't know. But now, when you see these things come to pass, see them on your television, and that's all you do see on TV. If you see in the news, everything the Bible said is there. The end is near, even at the door.